Chapter 16 So then, the seventh planet was the Earth. The Earth is not just a normal planet. There are 111 kings, not forgetting the African kings among them, 7,000 geographers, 900,000 businessmen, 7,500,000 alcoholics, 311,000,000 proud men, that is to say, about 2 billion grown-ups. To give you an idea of the size of Earth, I will tell you that before electricity, it was necessary to have 462,511 lamplighters. Over the whole of the six continents, it needed 462,511 lamplighters. Seen from a slight distance, that would make an excellent show. The movements of this army would be controlled like those of the ballet in the opera. First would come the turn of the lamplighters of New Zealand and Australia. Having set the light of their lamps, these would go off to sleep. Next, the lamplighters of China and Siberia would enter for their steps in the dance, and then they too would go backstage. After that would come the turn of the lamplighters of Russia and the Indies, then those of Africa and Europe, then those of South America, then those of North America. And never would they make a mistake in the order of their entry on the stage. It would be amazing. Only the man who was in charge of the single lamp at the North Pole, and his friend who was responsible for the single lamp at the South Pole, only these two would live freely. They would be busy twice a year. Chapter 17 When one wishes to play the wit, he sometimes walks a little from the truth. I have not been fully honest in what I have told you about the lamplighters, and I realize that I gave a false idea of our planet to those who do not know it. Men occupy a very small place on Earth. If the two billion people on its surface were all to stand upright, they could easily be put into one public square 32 kilometer long and 32 kilometer wide. They are sometimes crowded together as they do for some big public gatherings. All humanity could be piled up on a small Pacific island. The grown-ups will not believe you when you tell them that. They imagine that they will fill a great deal of space. They wish for themselves as important as the baobabs. You should advise them to make their own calculations. They love figures, and that will please them. But do not waste your time on this extra task. It is unnecessary. You have trust in me. When the little prince arrived on the earth, he was very much surprised not to see any people. He was beginning to be afraid he had come to the wrong planet. At that time, a coil of gold flashed across the sand. Good evening, said the little prince gently. Good evening, said the snake. What planet is this on which I have come down? asked the little prince. This is Earth. This is Africa, the snake answered. Ah, there are no people on the earth? This is the desert. There are no people in the desert. The earth is large, said the snake. The little prince sat down on a stone and raised his eyes toward the sky. I wonder if the stars are alight in heaven so that one day each one of us may find his own star again, he said. Look at my planet. It is right there above us. But how far away it is. It is beautiful, the snake said. What has brought you here? I have been having some trouble with a flower, said the little prince. Ah, said the snake. And they were both silent. Where are the men? The little prince at last took up the conversation again. It is a little lonely in the desert. It is also lonely among men, the snake said. The little prince stared at him for a long time. You are a funny animal, he said at last. You are no thicker than a finger. But I am more powerful than the finger of a king, said the snake. The little prince smiled. You are not very powerful. You haven't even any feet. You cannot even travel. 
I can carry you farther than any ship could take you, said the snake. He twisted himself around the little prince's ankle like a golden chain. Whomever I touch, I send back to the earth from where he came. The snake spoke again, but you are pure and true, and you come from a star. You move me to pity. You are so weak on this earth made of stone, the snake said. I can help you someday. If you grow too homesick for your own planet, I can... Oh, I understand you very well, said the little prince. But why do you always speak in riddles? I solve them all, said the snake. And they were both silent. Chapter 18 The little prince crossed the desert and met with only one flower. It was a flower with three petals, a flower of no importance at all. Good morning, said the little prince. Good morning, said the flower. Where are the men? The little prince asked gently. The flower had once seen people passing. Men, she echoed. I think there are six or seven of them alive. I saw them several years ago, but no one ever knows where to find them. The wind blows them away. They have no roots, and that makes their life very difficult. Goodbye, said the little prince. Goodbye, said the little prince. Goodbye, said the flower. Chapter 19 After that, the little prince climbed a high mountain. The only mountains he had ever known were the three volcanoes which came up to his knees. And he used the dead volcano as a chair. From a mountain as high as this one, he said to himself, I shall be able to see the whole planet at one and all the people. But he saw nothing but peaks of rock that were sharpened like needles. Good morning, he said gently. Good morning, good morning, good morning, answered the echo. Who are you, said the little prince. Who are you, who are you, who are you, answered the echo. Be my friends, I am all alone, he said. I am all alone, all alone, all alone, answered the echo. What an odd planet, he thought. It is completely dry and pointed and tough and grim, and the people have no imagination. They repeat whatever one says to them. On my planet, I had a flower. She was always the first to speak.